Three, two, one. Here we go. Welcome to Lighthouse Live with Jordan Devitt, the show where we give God the glory from this generation to the next. And now to your host, Jordan Devitt. Good morning and welcome back to Lighthouse Live. I'm your host, Jordan Devitt. I'm so happy that you joined me this morning. Uh, God bless you. And I'm just, I'm just grateful for what God is doing here through this ministry. First and foremost, I just love to thank Pastor Dan, the senior pastor here at the Lighthouse Church of All Nations. I love you and I honor you. I want to thank each and every person who joined me this morning. I'm so happy that you're with us. And I just want to thank my Lighthouse family for joining me and being with me too. I really appreciate all the support that you all do for me. Uh, Before I do anything, I do want to say this. It's important that you tell people and share these type of broadcasts and film so that people can hear the message of the gospel preached. You see, the the gospel message, sometimes we feel like we may go through the motions, but it is a very urgent message, and it's important that you tell people about when the gospel is being preached. You allow people to see the gospel being preached, so tagging people, telling people, inviting people is so important and so crucial, and I want you all to be able to just do that. I challenge you to do that this morning and allow someone else to be able to receive the gospel into their heart so that they can live for God and that they can have uh, Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But this morning, we are doing the second part about how to remove pride out of your life. And so first and foremost, I'm going to jump right in to the difference of pride and confidence because God actually does want us to live with confidence in our heart. You see, pride, the easiest way that pride you're able to see it, is pride is very, very me-centered. There's a level of arrogance when it comes to pride. Pride is all about me doing this, and I can do this, and um, it's all me-centered. But confidence is we-centered. You know, the Bible says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Now, that's we-centered as in God and Paul. That's we-centered, but if it was me-centered, it would be more something like Paul can do all things through the strength that Paul gives himself. Uh, It's very, and there would be a level of arrogance that comes through that. And so what I want you to understand this morning is that there's a big difference, and it's good to be confident. It's good to be confident in the Lord. It's good to be confident in the things that God's called you to do, because God wants you to accept and I love the things that he's called you to do. But at the same time, pride operates in a way where it's all about the person. It's all about what they can do. It's all about all the things that they are doing and achieving. And everything goes back to them. And that's pride. And that's how you'll be able to know the difference uh, if pride is operating. And then the last one I will say too is false humility. False humility is really just a disguise for pride. Uh, It's basically when someone will go and they'll, you know, pretend to be humble or they'll tell you, hey, you know, I'm terrible at bowling or something like that when they're the greatest person at bowling. And most of the time they're usually just fishing for someone to go and tell them, hey, you know, you're amazing at this. You're amazing at that. You're amazing at that. You know, what are you talking about? That's, it, it really is still a form of pride. And so I want you guys to all be able to see these different areas and why it's important for us to be confident, but not prideful and not to be proud. And so I'm going to give you three major ways that you can be able to live without pride in your life. And the first way is through humbling yourself. And I know this may sound uh, obvious, but it's actually something that a lot of people deal with uh, in a very harsh way. And it says in 1 Peter 5 and 6, humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. You see, it would be a great thing for each and every person to be able to humble themselves before God has to humble you. And the truth of the matter is, a lot of people get humbled by God when the Bible verse talks about how it's better that we actually be the ones to humble ourselves. And the way that you do that, my, my easiest way that I can be able to do this is through thanking God and glorifying God for everything. Uh, you know, 
one person I can boast on about this who does this a lot is Pastor Dan. Pastor Dan, uh, he has lots of things that he does in the world and throughout his ministry and traveling and preaching and teaching and television and, and music and all different types of things. And if you ever notice, any time that he ever says anything about what God's doing in his life, he'll always follow it by saying, you know, I, I give thanks to dear Jesus or, you know, you know, glory be to God, or this is a revenue stream that God gave me, something along the lines of giving back the glory to God. And if you want God to be able to entrust you with more, you have to be able to learn the importance of humility and how God wants you to humble yourself your, by, on your own. He wants you to be able to take the time and say, you know what, I, I need to, I need to push back a little bit. I need to say, okay, you know what? Like, even if people compliment me, even if people are giving me these things, even if people are telling me all these different types of things, not allowing it to fill you up so much, because if it fills you up so much, the problem is what happens when those people may not say anything at all? What happens when people don't tell you good game or good job or good, good job doing this work or get, good job getting this assignment done? Then we, we have no, you know, confidence in ourselves anymore. And so let God be the one to fill you with confidence. Let God be the one uh, to exalt you. Let God be the one to push you up and lift you up. But when things come and when things are brought to you and God blesses you in your life, allow it to be God who is the one exalting you and pushing you up rather than people filling you with so many different things. Allow God to be able to take you to these places and give him back the glory. It would be the easiest way that you'll be able to humble yourself and live in a place of humility. And I'm telling you, it is something that will change your life and keep you from allowing pride to be in your life. Here's my second point. Let others be the ones who boast about you and not yourself. Uh, let me make this very clear. There's nothing wrong with saying good things that have happened to you. There's nothing wrong with saying, uh, you know, things that have just taken place in your life. There's nothing wrong with that, especially, you know, if you're telling your friends, your family, or your spouse, or whoever, it's okay telling people things that have happened in your life, but allow others to be the ones who boast about you more than yourself. Proverbs 27 and 2 says, let someone else praise you and not your own mouth, an outsider and not your own lips. Uh, you know, one great testimony I could say about the body of Christ is a lot of these people really are just humble in the way that they do things that I've seen and that I've been around. Uh, one of my close friends is Matt Cruz. And Matt Cruz, when he, he's, he's a famous evangelist. He speaks all around the world. And I mean literally all around the world. He's written a book. Uh, he's, he's done a lot of amazing things for the kingdom of God. I like to travel with Matt when he, he's traveling locally around the Chicagoland area when he's preaching and just, you know, feed off of the word of God and what he's bringing uh, as he ministers. And one of the things I notice when I'm hanging out with Matt and some of the other people that he, hang, that he hangs out with, a lot of these people are very popular in the Christian world and in the world of uh, ministry all throughout the United States and, and the world. But the truth of the matter is, when we're hanging out, I couldn't tell you what these people are famous for or what they do. I would have no idea. And the reason I say that is because no one acts like they're so high and mighty. No one acts prideful. No one is out here saying, I do this and I do that and I run this and I have this and I have that. And the truth of the matter is people, you know, in the world would do the exact opposite. If you walk into a room in the world where someone is known for anything, they right away, you will know that this person has got, you know, all of these things that they've achieved and, and these accolades that have taken place in their life. You might bump into their shoulder and, you know, find out, well, you know who I am. And the truth of the matter is that is when you realize that, Sometimes people will be in a position where they want so badly to boast about themselves and it all ties back to being too prideful. And I'm, tell you, I'm here to tell you that the only one, the only one who really needs to be able to be glorified is God in these positions. And when you don't boast about yourself, oftentimes when you're doing things, they're God will exalt you and others will boast for you. You know, when I'm hanging out with these people, people tell me, well, they did this, they did that, and they're, and, and they're 
you know, their ministry is doing this and reaching these people and their uh, music is reaching these people and, and all these amazing things that are taking place and happening and you won't even have to boast for yourself. And that is the story that you want to have as a believer. You want to do work and you want to make things happen, but you want other people to be able to be the ones who are putting you up and saying all the good things that you've done. You know, uh, it is so important and God wants you to be able to have this in your life. I remember uh, I was with Pastor Dan one time, and I, I'm, I'm always around because I do work um, for the ministry and for um, the Lighthouse Church of All Nations too. And so I was spending time with, and I've gotten to travel with Pastor Dan too um, in different opportunities with some other young um, men throughout the church. And we were, we were getting food or something one, at one point, and um, this young man was just confiding and talking to us, and I remember uh, pastor just saying to the young man, you know, you, you should come to Lighthouse. We go to Lighthouse. You should come here, and, you know, we go there, and all these different things, and just inviting them, and I noticed so quickly the level of humility that Pastor Dan was carrying when he said that. And the reason that it's so important for us to see those things is because he's the pastor. He's the senior pastor of the, a mega church. But he's not, he's not out there boasting and telling people, well, you know, you know come, come here, this is my church, and all, whatever it could be. But he's, he has a level of humility when he's saying these things. And I believe, and I know, that when we as believers begin to realize the importance of humility, the importance of brokenness, the importance of just being and doing the job that we have to do, God is going to give us so much more. God gives grace to the humble. God allows the humble to have more. And he trusts them more. And so I want to tell you all this morning to learn to not boast about yourself and allow the Lord, or other people, to be the ones to talk. Allow other people. And when they do, all you have to say is glory be to God. Now here's my third point. And I actually really have four. But my third point is this. Conf- uh, learn to have confession in your life. And I love that the way that the King James Version says it. It says in James 5, 16, it says, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Confession is powerful when it's done the right way. Whether you do it with a, a prayer minister or a leader or a pastor or whoever it may be or a spouse, if you want to remove pride out of your life, or you may be dealing with pride today, I want to tell you, learn to confess your faults. And let me explain to you why. When you confess your faults, what it does is it shows that we're just humans. We're not Superman. We're not uh, able to do every single thing without a problem. We're not you know, we're, there, there's so many things that we're not. And it's important that you know this this morning. That we do have things because of being human. But God will fill them and he'll heal them and he'll take our weaknesses. And he'll use his strength to fill those areas. I remember I confessed the other day something that I was dealing with. Because I am human. Because I do have problems. And the humility and the brokenness that came upon me was so, it it was just, I knew in my heart that I'm just a man. And I need God. I need God to fill the places that I can't fill. I need God to to take care of the areas that I, I can't take care of. I need him for that. And so do you. And so if there's something in your heart that's bothering you, 
If there's something in your heart that you're having trouble with, if there's something that you, you feel like you can't break, maybe it's a sin that you're having troubles with, confess it. Because what's going to happen is you're going to release the pride and a spirit of humility is going to come upon you. And when this does, you're going to see a significant change in your life because God is here and he's with people who can live in a place of humility. God's with people who can live with a heart willing to trust him. And so if you're dealing with this right now, I want you to know that God is willing to help. God is willing to take care of you. God is willing to bless you through all these things. He's willing, and he'll do it for you. I'm telling you now, trust him and allow him to do what only he can do. Trust him and allow him to take those areas in your life and fill them with his peace. Now here's my fourth point. In Proverbs 22 and 4 it says, The reward for humility and the fear of the Lord is riches, honor, and life. You see, God rewards humility. I remember when I was in high school, there were two particular athletes that I, I really, uh, I really just respected them. And I, let me tell you why. There was one athlete, and out of all of the years that I, I played uh, football, he was always generous and kind to everyone. Always. And now, I'll say this, he, he had a heart of humility. He really did. And my whole, the whole time that I, I got to play with him, I always looked at him and I thought, you know what, I would love it if someone like him got to get a full ride offer or full ride scholarship to go and play football at any university that he wants. And it turned out that in all the years that I was at that high school, so what that means is I was there for four years, but there was uh, eight years of kids who were there. Because when I was a freshman, there was four years above me and then four years below me when I was a senior. And this young man received so many scholarships and so many offers that he had to choose. He had to have at least 20 different Division I offers in the time that he played. And the reason that I believe and I know that God rewarded him and that God was willing to give someone like him a gift in that manner is because he had a level of humility in his heart. He had a level of being able to not act all wild about all the things that are coming to him. He, he didn't have to act prideful. He didn't have to act arrogant. He didn't have to be mean. And so every time I look at where he's at and what he's gotten to do, I always remember this. My prayer is this, when someone like that is in the position of getting offers, I say every single time, God bless them with more, bless them with more, give them more, because someone like that is trustworthy. Someone like that is able to handle the things that God gives them. Someone like that, someone like you can handle more when a level of humility is come upon you. When a place where you don't have to go and tell everyone what you're doing, where you don't have to be in a position where you're boasting, where you don't have to have everyone see what you're doing, where no one has to see anything and you're okay. I'm here to tell you this morning, live with a level of humility because when you do, God will reward it and he'll honor it. He'll take those things of humility in your heart and in your life and he'll use them to his glory. And he'll allow you to have more. So this morning, I urge you to live with humility. Take these things that I'm saying so seriously because God is calling you to have humility in your heart and to live in a manner where you don't have to boast about everything, but God will boast for you. People will boast for you. I'm here to tell you, 
understand the difference between pride and confidence. Be confident in everything that you do because God designed you that way. You don't have to reject yourself in anything except what God's called you to do. Take, uh, take courage in it. Be bold in it. But the moment that pride comes, I want you to know, refute it. If anything that you see is somewhat pride, refute it and refuse for it to be in your life because God wants you to live without it and it's something that always ends in destruction. It's something that always ends in problems. It's something that always ends up with never-ending issues. And so this morning, allow, allow God to lift you up and allow humility to enter into your heart Be okay with confessing. Be okay with it. Because when you confess, there's a level of brokenness that will come upon you. And and, and that is the importance that God knows that you are able to handle anything. Because it's not you in the first place. It never will be. It never can be. It's always because of the strength of the Lord. And so this morning, I want to take a moment to pray with you all. Father, I thank you for these last two episodes about pride and humility. And Lord, I know that right now it's a very important topic that everyone in the body of Christ needs to know about. Lord, I pray that you would just call us, Lord, to be even more humble. Call us, Lord, to be able to exalt your name, God, and not ours call us, Lord God, to be able to lift you up and not us, God. Lord, use us for your glory, Lord. Allow us, Lord, to be able to bring everything back to you, Lord. Let others be the ones who boast about us, Lord. Let us not be filled with pride. Lord, reward each and every person who's hearing this, who's willing to be humble. Lord, let them, Lord, have more. Fill them with more, Jesus. Bless them more, God. Bless their hearts, Father. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And right now, I just want to take a moment to pray with you. If you've yet to receive Jesus Christ in your life, oh, it'll be a wonderful time for you to be able to serve the Lord. And Jesus loves you, and he wants you to be able to live with him all the days of your life and to be able to have eternal heaven and everything and be able to take his life and let it be the centerpiece of your life. And so just repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. I'm willing to turn away from my sins. I'm willing to follow you. I love you. I thank you for all that you've done for me. I believe that you died for me on the cross at Calvary. And I'm willing to live for you all the days of my life. And I give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. And I want to tell you, no matter what, even if you mess up in some of these areas, even if you've had issues, God is for you. And God is in the position where he wants to take you to new levels in the kingdom. And so keep pushing. Keep going. Even if there's things that you're going through, even if it gets hard, even if there's times where you feel like, man, I want to quit, I want to give up, I'm just having too many issues, I'm having too many problems, people don't notice me. God notices you, and God knows that he will bless you in those moments that it feels so hard. And just don't ever give up. Keep going and allow the Lord to take all the burdens in your heart and let them be put upon him because he can carry those things. I'm so happy that you joined me. And I want to say, if you all uh, are on social media, just uh, follow me at Jordan Devitt, J-O-R-D-A-N-D-E-V-I-T-T. You can look at me up on Facebook or Instagram and get connected with me uh, and the things that I'm doing through ministry. I just want to say thank you again for all of your support and all the things that each and every one of you has done and just being able to support and follow um, this ministry. I really appreciate it. And God is doing something through this ministry right now. And I want you to just be able to stick with uh, what we're doing here and just 
um, comment and just so, show support throughout this ministry and all the things that are happening. I love you all. I'm so happy that you've been with me. I'm so happy what God's doing. And I say this because I know it and I love it. And I just know what God is doing. There's a revival that's coming to the city of Chicago and you need to be a part of this because God is doing something special here. Stay connected, uh, get engaged, allow God to do what only he, he can do in your life because he loves you and he knows what's best for you. So stay focused, stay on track, get in church, uh, <laughs> be on time, do the work of the kingdom of God because really at the end of the day, that's the only thing that's important no matter what. All the things that will be remembered is what you do for the kingdom of God and serving Jesus. Anything else, it's important, but the most important thing is that you serve Jesus and that you live for him. Have an amazing Sunday morning. God bless you. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Get your new book from Pastor Dan Willis, The Multicultural Church, Embracing Unity and Restoration. For over 40 years, Pastor Dan Willis has led a growing multicultural church community in the suburbs of Chicago. His insight, wisdom, and overall love for people are sure to bless and empower your ministry. Order your copy of The Multicultural Church, Embracing Unity and Restoration today. Log on to www.danwillis.org today and take your ministry to the next level.